been dying to catch up with this guy ever since I listened to him on the sports line when I interned and even uh, was a, just a listener of the show that Rich Roth and Larry Richmond hosted. David Teal was one of my favorites. He's very informative. He writes for the Newport News Daily Press down there in the 757. David joined me to talk about realignment, shuffling with the state schools. We also talk about could the ACC see more movement, as well as some Virginia Tech talk with James Johnson. And what's the future of Dorian Finney-Smith? David Teal breaks it down with us here on the Sports Buffet Podcast. Back in the day when I was interning uh, with Rich Roth and Larry Richmond, the sports line, I always enjoyed days when David Teal would come on columns from the Daily Press. And uh, David, a uh, lot going on. Uh, let's uh, just dive right in. What do you make, first off, of the CAA really being destructed? And for ODU, uh, what type of move do you think this is for them to uh, see USA? Well, <laughs> It's day a week. Um, two press conferences, one of the VCU to announce its departure from the CA to the Atlantic 10, and uh, then, then another one two days later, three days later, to announce um, all the men to move to Conference USA. Uh, I would describe both moves as understandable but risky. And I think Old Dominion is the most risky because of the football component and upgrading a program that's only been playing for three years uh, to the bowl subdivision, or what we all know is, is Division 1A. Um, and that, that's, that's a big jump in scholarships and competition. And, um, you know, Old Dominion's won 27 of its first 35 football games and has spoiled its fan base. They're not going to win 27 of their next 35. I guarantee you that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take that bet at all uh, with you. Uh, in terms of moving up, though, what type? What What do you think does make ODU ready? I mean, I think one big thing is they've got a good recruiting ground with the seven five seven there. And peop, in the case of you know, I mean, even getting the quote unquote leftovers in the seven five seven, uh, that's still a pretty good meal. Well, I don't, I don't know that the leftovers are, are going to be good enough. I mean, conference deal state clearly is not. The, the, the same caliber as the automatic qualifying DCS conferences, mm-hmm. uh, but both Southern Mississippi and Houston. Now Houston is moving to the Big East eventually, but last year two conference USA schools finished the year in the AP Top 25. Uh, the year before that, Central Florida and Tulsa uh, of Conference USA finished the year in, in the Top 25. So it is a credible Division One A football league. And and Old Dominion is going to be in a division uh, with um, with Southern Miss and with Florida International, uh, with East Carolina. Uh, that's going to be its, its closest rival, and, and you would think it would become a really good series to watch. But uh, yeah, the, the competition is going to be really stiff, and it, you know history tells us it, it, it takes a while for. A one A to to get up and run. You know, unless you're like a, a school such as Marshall that have won, uh, I forget how many won double A national championships before upgrading uh, to the Mid American Conference, and now is in Conference USA it will be another Eastern Division rival of uh, Old Dominion. How would you rank ODU's facilities in terms of uh, making the move up? Well, for football, I would say a C. Okay. Just, 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 just average. I mean, the football stadium it's, itself has done a nice job dusting it up in the end zone. Uh, but all in all, it's a you know it's a bunch of bleachers and it seats about nineteen thousand eight hundred people. Uh, so as, as Division One A stadiums go. Uh, it's, it, it's not very good, uh, but, but they do have, they have, they have a really nice practice facility. Um, they have, they have not put on the cheap. Um, they have a very nice basketball arena for both men and women play in uh, right there on campus. And, uh, it's, 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 they have a nice setup. I mean, they, they, their rollout has is, is been very good. I mean, from the time they decided they were going to you know, restart football after a many decade absence, and they raised the money, they hired the coaching staff, they recruited the players, they practiced for a couple of years before they even played. They're deliberate. This is the first time they haven't been deliberate 
VCU makes the move, and obviously uh, they don't have football to worry about. Uh, they're going to the Atlantic 10. First off, do you think this move, uh, kind of analyze the move, and do you think it keeps Shaka Smart at VCU any longer than it would have kept him if they were still in the CAA? No, I don't, I don't think so uh, on, on Shaka Smart, simply because I think that situation is going to be driven by what jobs uh, come available, A, and B, what jobs are attractive uh, to, to Coach Long. I don't know that anyone knows that in, in the media. I, I certainly can't tell. Uh, he's a Midwestern guy, uh, Illinois in the Big Ten, uh, threw a reported $2.5 million at him, which would have doubled his salary uh, during this offseason, and he said thanks, but no. Uh, so I, I'm not sure uh, what particular job is any. Um, Coach Swanwell, he, he may be a, like a Brad Stevens or Butler, and he may really want to commit long term uh, to, to VCU. Uh, the Atlantic 10, historically, has been a better basketball conference than CAA. Uh, but I still hated to, to see the Rams go. I think you know, their thinking was we have a better chance for at-large bids in the Atlantic 10. But I think VCU's program has elevated itself with its resources, with its success, with Coach Smart, to the point where in, even the CAA, I think the Rams were always going to have a viable, at large chance. And this past season, I'm convinced that VCU lost that CAA championship game to Gressel. VCU uh, would have received an at large bid up those profile was more than good enough. Uh, where, where they would, I, mean, I think the interesting question is, you, you, mean, you, you just never know what it was hypothetical. VCU almost didn't make the tournament in 2011. They were one of the last two teams selected for the field, and yet they turned that around and make the Final Four. Let's say VCU didn't even make the 2011 tournament. Would the United even been interested in VCU? Good point. Uh, an interesting question. Yeah, very, very good point. Uh, let's talk real quick about what does this do for what I like to call the, you know, and I don't mean this as a slap, non-revenue or Olympic-type sports at VCU and ODU especially, because I, I can't imagine that ODU is really thrilled about having the, uh, you know, tennis or golf team uh, make a trip to Houston or whatnot. How do you feel it affects the uh, the smaller sports that don't rake in the revenue like a football and a basketball do? Well, um, with, 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 with Conference USA being strictly divisional, uh, not strictly, but mostly divisional play during the regular season, uh, opening his trips west of the Mississippi are, are, are going to be minimal. Now, are there going to be, there's going to be much more, many more flights, uh, because if you have to go to Hattiesburg, Mississippi, or down to Miami to play Florida International, uh, and, you know, they're not going to have William and Mary next door, and they're not going to be able to just bus up to James Madison, or George Mason, or, or, or DC. Clearly, there's going to be a little more travel. Um, even, but we need to talk with the VCU folks and their move uh, to the Atlantic 10. They only estimate now, you know, this is their internal projections, an extra $150,000 a year uh, in, in travel costs. And when your budget's over $25 million a year annually, you know, an extra one hundred fifty k is a chicken scratch, but it's, it's, it's not that significant. The Atlantic Coast Conference, I know there have been a few rumblings a little bit this week with uh, Florida State saying they might want out. Uh, I know you've got uh, Syracuse and, uh, uh, help me out. Pittsburgh. Fit Syracuse and Pittsburgh coming in. Do you see the ACC adding any more or subtracting any more at this time? I, I think for now the ACC is going to be uh, pretty stable. I, I know there is a lot of smoke around Florida State right now. And a, and a potential move to the Big 12, fueled by uh, its board of trustees chairman who voiced dissatisfaction with the ACC new television contract. 
uh, now a, a, a great source of his consternation uh, was incorrect. He was misinformed about the details of the contract. Uh, but still, it, it really did cause a firestorm. Uh, you never say never in Thomas realignment because a year ago, no one had any inkling that Sears and Pittsburgh would be coming to the ACC. Uh, but I, I would still, if, if, if I were a betting man, and I most certainly am not, uh, I would think that the ACC will remain for some time at 14. When people, I remember, uh, it's been months and months, uh, I know it's kind of just maybe rumor mill with Virginia Tech uh, maybe wanting to go to the SEC. Would you ever, in your crystal ball, see that happening? Maybe the only way that would happen uh, is if the ACC were to start to crumble. Uh, otherwise, Virginia Tech is precisely where it should be and where its leadership wants to be. Now, uh, Virginia Tech is in a situation where it, it, they're going to have some presidential turnover here in the next couple of years. They're going to have a turnover in the AD in the next couple of years if, if Jim Weaver eases into retirement. And Frank Bean was probably, what, five years maybe? Right. Uh, to, to coach. So, you know, long term, could they end up in the SEC? Sure, it could happen. Uh, but I really think there would have to be some splitting of the ACC before Virginia Tech would consider such a point. And we talk a little bit, too, some more with David Teal. Virginia Tech does have a new basketball coach with uh, James Johnson. A, do you feel that Seth Greenberg, uh, I don't want to say deserved to get fired, but I thought the timing was a little odd and the way it happened was a little odd. Uh, comment on that and comment on the hiring of Johnson. Well, the, the timing was unusual, no question, but I think it, it, it speaks to what Jim Weaver said in the press conference that day when he, when he dismissed Coach Weaver, it wasn't about wins and losses. If it had been, they could have dismissed him in March. This was more about the continually fraying relationship between Coach Greenberg and the administration, specifically Jim Weaver, the AD. And when assistant coaches started leaving, and when Coach Greenberg inferred that uh, the reason was that they were leaving because they weren't being paid enough, which clearly reflected poorly on the athletic director. The athletic director was not amused because it was not true. One of the coaches said that they were leaving over money. And that was the proverbial last straw. And uh, in, in James Johnson, uh, you know, we, we, we talked about risks uh, that, that are understandable. Uh, James Johnson is certainly a risky hire. Uh, ACC basketball is usually not for on-the-job training. These uh, these positions usually go to established head coaches. And this is James's first chance to wear the big whistle and sit in the corner office. And there's no doubt um, that, that, that Seth Greenberg is, is rolling the dice here. Um, but he, you know, he hired James Johnson for... Uh, you know, far less money than he would have had to pay for a more established coach. If that's the reason he hired him, that's clearly a mistake. Uh, he said that one of the reasons he hired him was for player retention. Uh, that didn't work out so well with the transfer of Dorian Finney Smith, uh, the departure of one of the recruits, Montrezl Harrell. Um, but um, I think there's been some positives. It appears that Coach Johnson is, is really put together and uh, a diverse staff with different backgrounds and levels of experience. I, I think it's a staff that can really recruit well. And, and, and not to be overlooked here, because James Johnson is going to be a unifier in the athletic department and among Hokey fans. I think he's very popular. He's going to have every chance to succeed. And uh, you know, then, then we'll see how it does. It's going to take a while. And, uh, coaching eyes are like recruiting classes. Everyone wants to judge them on signing day, but the best judge is in four years, and I think that's going to be the case with Coach Jobs. How good of a basketball job is Virginia Tech, in your opinion, in the ACC, and what do you think would maybe have been, I don't want to say the highest profile coach they got could have gotten, but could they have gotten maybe a Greg Marshall, you think, or would they have had to just break the bank too much? Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, Jim Weaver conducted his search uh, very secretively. 
Uh, so we don't know who else he talked to. We don't know who else he approached. Uh, we, we do know that there was some fears that the shock is smart and he declined. And also Curtis Moody at Richmond and he declined. Now where it went from there, I don't know. I don't know that they're really in the media knows. Uh, to serve Cleveland's credit, the Virginia Tech job is a lot better than when he took over nine years ago. Uh, I think Coach Greenberg proved that Virginia Tech can compete in the ACC. Yes, the Huskies were 4-12 and late this past year, uh, but that was very much an anomaly. They made it in, in the 7-9 and nine to 10-6 and six range um, pretty much every year. Uh, and, you know, and I think that's probably much better than people anticipated when the Huskies first joined the ACC. Uh, you're throwing a $21 million practice. Facility. Well, and the other thing, too, is there a bad job in the ACC? Is there a bad, no, I don't know that there's a bad job. I think uh, other than Duke and Carolina, they are, they are all darn difficult jobs. Right. Because you have Duke and Carolina. But, uh, no, I don't think there's a bad job. Yeah, because, I mean, I think when people say Virginia Tech is not a, uh, you know, I think when people say Virginia Tech is not a great job, well, I can argue that the 12th best job in the ACC is, you know, better than the third or fourth best job in another conference just because of the ACC's history and so forth and so on. Yeah, I would agree with you. Dorian Finney-Smith, uh, where does he go from here, you think? I, I, I really don't know. I think he's got his list now down to uh, a handful or maybe even more schools. Uh, I think one possibility that, that you would certainly think that would be Florida, so because uh, the Gators were a finalist uh, when he signed out of high school. Uh, I, I think Georgetown's trying to get in the mix. I think VCU's in the mix. Uh, but yeah, I, it would just be a far-flung guess. I would say Florida, but you just don't know. No interest in ODU? I know that would kind of be the home school, per se. No, there is no interest in Ultimate U. Well, David, certainly appreciate your first time on the uh, podcast. Hopefully you'll be a visitor again and uh, keep up the good work with the uh, Daily Press. My pleasure. Thanks, man.